I had heard of the concept of minimalism for years before I actually decided to try it for myself. And the reason is, I had all these ideas of these rules that I would have to follow in order to classify myself as a minimalist. And the truth is there is a stereotypical lifestyle of a minimalist. That's true. <laughs> that is out there. But it's not true that you have to follow all of these strict or specific rules in order to qualify as a minimalist. And as we are entering into a new year, I think a lot of us are thinking about how we can simplify in 2022, maybe how we can downsize our possessions just to make things a little bit more stress-free. So this is the perfect time to be talking about what rules you do not have to follow in order to simplify or minimize your life. And I think the main thing to remember is that the idea of minimalism is just living with the things that bring value to your life and discarding or rejecting the things that do not. So that is all you really need to focus on if you want to become more of a minimalist or live more simply. And this is going to look completely different for everybody. But let's go ahead and dive in and talk about some of the minimalist rules or the stereotypical minimalist rules that you do not have to follow in order to pursue this. This lifestyle. Number one, I think a lot of us envision the Scandinavian style when we think of a minimalist home. It's very stripped down, it's very bare, it's very natural. And although this is stunning and I can see how and why it appeals to so many people, you do not have to do this in order to pursue minimalism or even become a minimalist. As you can see, I do not have that style at all. <laughs> like not at all, yet I consider myself more of a minimalist and someone who lives more simplified and clutter free. So you do not have to be afraid that in order to embrace a more minimalist lifestyle, you have to actually accept and live in a certain aesthetic. It's just not true. This next one kind of makes me laugh, but plants, you do not have to own a single live plant in order to be a minimalist. I do not own one, not a single one. In fact, my husband had one that his grandmother had given him and he killed that plant about 15 times and brought it back to life until it finally died, which was good because we found out it was poisonous and I don't want that around my kids. That was the only plant we've ever had and I personally have never bought one. I've never cared for one and I am okay with that. I think at some point it might be fun to care for a live plant, but I don't feel the need to have a plant just to kind of fit into this stereotype of the minimalist. I see a lot of these beautiful plants that have these vines coming down and it's very, very reminiscent of a minimalist lifestyle. A lot of the girls that I follow have these and I love them. I don't have them yet. I pursue a minimalist life. So you do not have to have a plant, although I do think it's pretty cool. I think a lot of us think of either a capsule wardrobe or even a uniform. And what I mean by uniform is like all black, all black shirts, or you have the same t-shirt in a variety of colors and this is kind of your uniform. You don't have to do this. I love to wear different patterns and colors and I, I don't do a capsule wardrobe by any means. And I really like to have this colorful wardrobe. Again, it speaks more to my personality. So you don't have to start over. You don't have to start over with your home decor. You don't have to start over in your wardrobe at all. Keep the things that are bringing you joy and let the other things go or are enhancing your life, not even bringing you joy. They can just be enhancing your life or making it more meaningful and everything else can go. So don't worry about your wardrobe. You can keep the things that you love, even if it's not a capsule wardrobe where you mix and match or a uniform where you wear all the same color or the same style in multiple colors. A lot of minimalists will suggest going digital, not having actual physical copies of books, maybe just downloading audiobooks or downloading books on a Kindle or a Kindle. I don't have one. I love actual books, tangible books that 
smell of the paper and the ink and just the act of holding a book under a blanket is about my favorite thing ever. So I'm not going to be going digital and I love having books. Now I've pared down my books and I only keep the ones that mean a lot to me. You can even bring this into your home decor if it's something that fits your style, but I, I don't feel like you have to go digital in every way. I still think there are so many things that we can enjoy physically having um, that we might think you know, initially we got to get rid of all of it. If we're going to pursue minimalism, you don't, you don't, you can have physical items that bring value to your life and you can still consider yourself a minimalist. All right. Montessori style toys. I actually really like them. I think they're very beautiful. They're open-ended. My kids seem to enjoy them more, but you don't have to do this in order to pursue minimalism or a more simplified life. If your kids absolutely love playing with light up plastic toys or plastic figurines, why would you get rid of them? They're bringing value to your child's life. So don't think you have to, again, this idea of like starting over, which is so overwhelming to think about starting over in any category of your life. You don't have to do this. Have the things that bring your kids joy, even if it's plastic toys or toys that make noise. But um, again, if you want to incorporate this into your new lifestyle or your new pursuit of minimalism, try it. I actually really enjoy this one, but you absolutely do not have to do it. Oh my goodness. I think there's this idea that you cannot spend money outside of basic necessities. This is just not true. You can still get yourself some jewelry. You can buy yourself a couple pairs of beautiful shoes, buy home decor. These are things that you really can enjoy even while pursuing minimalism and more simplicity. The point is that you're just more thoughtful and more intentional, not that you are actually limiting your life and stripping yourself down to the point where you're actually feeling deprived and feeling like you have now given up so much. The point is to feel like you are actually more fulfilled and that you actually have more that you're able to enjoy. Not that you're having less or you're suffering or you feel poor. That's not the point. So don't worry. You can still spend money on things that are valuable to you. You don't just have to buy the basic necessities. There's another idea that in order to be more of a minimalist, you really shouldn't exchange gifts. Maybe you shouldn't give gifts on kids' birthdays. Maybe you should even ask your family and friends not to give you any gifts because you're pursuing this new lifestyle. You can have presents. <laughs> you can have these things. In fact, we love shopping for our kids around the holidays and for their birthdays and getting them the things that they want. And you can totally do this. I know some minimalists who do zero gifts on Christmas, maybe you just one gift on birthday and that's totally fine. That works for some people and it might work beautifully for you, but don't feel like you have to not give or receive gifts because you're pursuing this lifestyle. <laughs> and I keep saying this, but again, it's just this idea of thinking more intentionally. Maybe instead of asking your family not to give you any gifts, you can ask them to give you experiences or consumable items, or you can think about maybe giving one less gift to your kids. If you normally buy seven, <laughs> buy six, you know, something like that. So you can still completely enjoy giving and receiving gifts while also pursuing minimalism. I think when we look at a stereotypical minimalist lifestyle, we might think that all of these things are secondhand. And I love shopping secondhand. I will never discourage it because I think it is so awesome. It's ethical, it's sustainable. It's really an awesome way to shop. In fact, 90% of my kids' wardrobe is secondhand. I love getting secondhand things adding them to my collection in my home, again, thoughtfully, but you don't have to. It's not this idea of being limited to a certain type of, you know, item. You can only shop at antique shops and thrift stores. This is not true. <laughs> if you find what you're looking for in an antique store, great, you know, bonus, but you don't have to, again, limit yourself to these things and just I think in general, try not to think about pursuing minimalism as something that is going to limit you, but that is actually going to help you grow and enjoy more fully the things in your life. 
I was kind of sad and I guess a little bit scared when I decided to begin truly pursuing a more minimalist and just intentional and simplified life. I was really sad that I was going to have to give up my seasonal decorating. I love decorating for fall and for Christmas. Those are like my two favorites and I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to get rid of everything and I'm not going to be able to decorate anymore if I still want to consider myself a minimalist or someone pursuing this lifestyle. But I have kept the things that mean the most to me and I continue to decorate. I love decorating. I have pared it down significantly. I've gotten rid of most of my decor, but it's the stuff that I honestly didn't really love anyway. When you're thinking about paring down and becoming more of a minimalist, it really does force you to look at all of the items in your home more critically and to ask them, are you fulfilling your purpose in my life? And it's really good to get raw and real with your stuff. It's so healthy, I believe, and can really open the door to more opportunities for freedom and financial freedom and freeing up your time. It's absolutely amazing. But don't let these stereotypical lifestyle, minimalist lifestyle rules stop you from pursuing this. I wish I had pursued it sooner and not been so afraid. So I hope this video was helpful. Please go ahead and subscribe if you liked it. I make videos like this all the time and can't wait to share more next year. Thanks for being here and I'll see you soon. Bye.